Well, my name is Sergio Ortiz. I know some of your faces, but not everybody. Uh, Y'all probably remember me. I was a substitute teacher at the high school for a little bit, and I was a color guard instructor. Well, I went away for school and came back, and now I have a degree, and it's like, woo, yay, but the school didn't hire me back. Anyways, so um, what I do, I am a genetic counselor <laughs> assistant, and I work for a company called Gene Matters. Um, so just a to start off with, um, you might see a bunch of things and you know a little bit about genetics, okay? So, oops, I forgot. <laughs> So if you know for a little bit about chemistry, you know that this is a water molecule. Granted, it's much bigger um, in size, and a whole bunch of these mix up what we drink uh, out of the fountain, uh, from the faucet, or normal water. Okay, now switching gears a little bit, this is a molecule of adenine. Now, if you know a little bit about genetics, you know that our DNA is made out of um, four types of main um, nucleotides, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine, okay? Uh, on the RNA side, there's, then there's added urine, okay? So this is adenine. And what I like to think about genetics is y'all been doing a lot of STEM stuff and y'all, I see that y'all doing some stuff in, in, uh, with computers. And as you know, whatever you see on a computer screen, technically the, the genetic code for computers is a bunch of ones and zeros. Okay, now with genetics, our genetic code, our programming is all by G, C's, A's, T's, and C's. Okay, so this is one of them. If y'all want to pass it around, feel free. Okay, now to break the ice a little bit, because some of y'all didn't know me, some of y'all don't, I'm going to start <laughs> out with a bad dad joke. No. Oh. <laughs> okay, I only know. 25 letters of the alphabet. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, okay, awesome. All right, so genetics in, in turn, the definition is... <laughs> the study of hereditary, um, heredity and the variations of inherited characteristics. Okay, so... What does that mean for us? What do we actually study? Okay, does anybody have maybe a little clue? What was the question? The genes. The genes, but what do we get from the genes? Uh, our history yeah. also medical. Yeah, so some of it's medical, um, which we'll go into here in a little bit, but it could be our eye color. It could be the size of our nose. Perfect. It could be that we're able to do this with our tongue. Okay? Um, it also could be, if you look at your knuckles, you look at your hands, there is actually, look at this part, if you have hair on, say, the front part of it, okay, that's actually done to a genetically in, um, inherited gene, okay? Maybe a couple more than just the one, but in general, that's what that is. Okay. So... What is genetic counseling? In general, we provide information about how genetic conditions are carried through and how they might affect us. We also help on the counseling side. So planning for a pregnancy, so you and a partner, they, you, you want to have a baby, you want to know a little bit about what's gonna happen or what you need to be aware of. Uh, we can do this while the person's pregnant and we can do this even after the child is born. We can all give you information about what is needed. Thank you so much. And in the long run, we can help you manage your health. So a couple of things that we'll go into further detail in. Um, we can help with breast cancer, ovarian cancer, Lynch syndrome, muscular dystrophy, and blood disorders. There's a whole slew of different genetic diseases, okay? All right, so who are genetic counselors? Well, genetic counselors are the professionals that help in, um, in this specialized career. So we go to school specifically to learn about genetics and also learn to learn about different counseling. 
Um, most of us work in hospitals, uh, obstetrics, gynecologists. Um, sometimes we are remote services or we go through specialized doctors. Um, oops, that one. Good. Okay. Sometimes counselors specialize in certain areas such as pediatrics or oncology, so oncology being cancer or prenatal. Okay, but the most important part that a genetic counselor does, just like it says in the name, we provide emotional support for um, patients and their partners whenever something might, in, might happen. We support them in making decisions. We help them make, kind of navigate through those waters and make sure that they understand what the implications could be of having a genetic disorder in the family. Genetic counselors are in extreme high demand right now. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. We are considered one of the 25 most best jobs to have in the US right now. Um, we are estimated to have a 21% growth rate by the time we get to uh, 2029. Um, currently, there are over 5,500 genetic counselors, and by 2029, uh, we are expected to have over 10,000. Uh, kind of to give you a scope of the idea of how many open positions there currently are, um, for every one genetic counselor, there are three open positions. So it's hard to not get a job as a genetic counselor. Fun fact. We can practice in all 50 states, and genetic counseling is available in all 50 states. It is also available in Canada and some European countries as well. This is a nice one. The average salary for a genetic counselor is $97,000 a year. That is amazing. That is almost doctor status. With, guess what, only a master's degree. You don't have to get a doctorate. And we'll go into that a little bit later. Okay. And a nice other uh, fact about this is right now the market for genetic counseling is made up and comprised by 94% female. So the, most of the counselors that you'll see are all female in, in relation. So um, there are 5% males, which is a big thing for me because I want to be a genetic counselor someday. So as the uh, profession expands and gets more diverse, they're going to be looking for those candidates. Another program that's very, uh, that does that a lot with, uh, does that too, is nursing for instance. You have a higher chance and a better chance as a male to get into a nursing program um, than a female does just because they're trying to be inclusive of everybody. And I'm ahead of myself. Okay. So, the growth in the market. So just to kind of give you just a roundabout idea, these are last year's numbers. Um, last year there was over 77,000 genetic tests performed. So 77,000, not necessarily patients, but genetic tests that were run maybe because they expanded uh, what they wanted to find out in their, in, their, um, in their panel, or they just needed to be retested again for whatever reason. There are over 17,000 genetic disorders anywhere between sickle cell anemia to muscular dystrophy to, um, oh, and I just had a brain fart. Sorry. La, 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 la. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, yes. All right. And right now with the current testing, we can test over 18,000 genes. So how many genes does that actually count, account for, for in the human body? it's still a very small percentage. I don't know the number for that right now. Um, currently with labs, there are 554 labs in the US that are able to test. So these labs are well, um, one, they're well equipped, and two, they have overload of how many, uh, how, what pace, how many tests they can perform in a day. So as the number of genetic tests increase, the more need for a lab is the, that we're gonna need. Okay, so um, what I have in so like I said at the beginning, my company is called Gene Matters. And how do we contribute to all of this? So, um, in essence, our biggest mission is to improve patient access to genetic care. What this means is here in Texas, for instance, our genetic counselor 
to patient ratio is actually really, really high. We don't have that many genetic counselors here. So what my company helps in providing is helping um, increasing the number of genetic counselors that are available remotely <coughs> or telehealth wise and providing them for Texas care or for wherever uh, remote area that they are in, okay? So we support hospitals, health networks, um, labs, biopharmaceuticals. Uh, if you don't know what biopharmaceuticals are, it's basically uh, pharmaceutical companies, but, oops. So they, um, they can do certain types of, pharmacy, uh, of prescriptions that better assist with what your genetic makeup is. So that's in to kind of, uh, gene or, oh, I forgot the name. Okay, anyways, <laughs> we'll go back to that. All right, um, other things that we do is we provide all of, our, um, all of our services through telehealth. So either by video conference call, kind of like a Zoom meeting for classes that you probably did in for um, your local high school or junior high, um, or college courses. Um, we also do these over just a regular phone call, so a, a conference call with phone. All right, so we tailor it to fit the patient need and the provider's needs. So that way the workflow goes in and, and goes you know, very smoothly. There's no interruption between having to come to a hospital or you know, making time out of your day to really go somewhere else. Or like for us here in Uvalde, we have to usually travel to San Antonio to get some services, right? So we don't have to do that. Some of the specialties that we offer, we have, which I've already touched base on, oncology, reproduction, cardiovascular, neurological, um, preventative care, pediatrics, and rare diseases. So with my company, <laughs> we have an average experience of 14 years, and all of our GCs are highly trained. They all have master's degrees, they all are certified in the work that they do, and even some of them have licensures. Okay, so, so you know what happens in most of these cases, here's a roundabout idea. So this is a prenatal genetic counselor um, a scenario. Case example, a couple is being seen in a prenatal clinic because they have a family history of a genetic disease. <clears throat> so patients can choose from a wide range of uh, tests they can have as little as three tests done, or they can have as many as 200 tests done. The screen for all these genetic mutations. So for example, some ethnicities are more prone <clears throat> to um, certain diseases. Hispanics are more prone to heart disease, while the European is more prone <laughs> to lung and liver diseases. Uh, African American are prone to more blood disorders such as sickle cell anemia um, or alpha thalassemia. Okay, uh, there are many procedures that are available to now to even help uh, individuals with their uh, with even having healthy children. Uh, we can screen for recessive diseases as well, and on these we actually don't have to go into the womb or the fetus to gain a sample. We can actually do it directly from the mother's blood. So it's actually very non-invasive for the, the newborn or the upcoming newborn um, baby. Yeah. Okay, so I think I already covered some of this. So on the recessive disease, patients can choose from the same wide range of tests. These tests only use the blood of the parent. So that's how we can, um, that, well, that's how we find out. Uh, genetic counselors in the long run, like I said on the emotional side, we are there to support the patient's decision. So no matter what actually happens, if maybe there is a genetic disorder that could, uh, let's say, have a very uh, low life expectancy, okay, then maybe the parents might choose to terminate the pregnancy because they don't want to have to stop that baby to suffer for that. Others would still want it. We are just there to support that decision so we can help them out and navigate through that. All right, so on the flip side, another side of this is cancer genetics. Who here has been in their family probably had somebody that they know that has had cancer in their family? Almost everybody. 
yeah? Okay, so as you might know, some of these cancers are actually um, <coughs> passed down through your family. So some of the genetic disorders that are happening here are cancer related. Many cancers are available to treat if they are caught early. For instance, uterine cancer or ovarian cancer or breast cancer even. Those are some that are that if we catch it early enough and we see the signs of them, we can do preventative care to help reduce the risk of actually having cancer. Okay, we can clarify which mutations in the genes are prone to whichever those cancers are. For instance, the BRCA gene, BRCA gene, is highly related to breast cancer, but there are some other BRCA2, which is related to ovarian and breast cancer, or PMS2, no, MSH6 is a gene that's related to colon cancer, but can cause some other cancers down the way. So if they have a better idea and understanding of what cancers to test for, or what cancers there are, we have a better understanding of what genes to test for to limit how much spending needs to be done for the genetic tests. All right, so on this one, this is listing us a, a, a few of the hereditary cancers that we go through. Um, so the list here, Lynch syndrome is a big one for uh, colon cancers. La Freemini uh, syndrome, Cowden syndrome, Bloom syndrome, um, hereditary breast and ovarian cancers, and such. These can all be caused by mutations in many different genes, so that's why navigating through a genetic counselor helps us get the prepared test that's better suited for the person. Now, big question, especially with that big 97,000, you know, uh, salary range, how do I become a genetic counselor? So first off, how many people are still in high school? Or perfect, awesome. So first off, you have to graduate high school. You have to get that, uh, that diploma and say that you're done. From there, next thing is a bachelor's. Okay, most, time, most of the time, getting your bachelor's in a biology related field, a counseling related field, or even a genetic related field are advantageous to getting on this, path, uh, this career path. So personally, I have a biology degree, but I have an emphasis in genetics because Texas State didn't have a genetics program. So I was able to at least get some genetic, uh, genetic uh, courses in there. Okay, so this little one here is what I do. I am the <laughs> genetic counselor assistant, and I'll explain why I did that first later. From there? Wait, what is it? What's the difference between like a genetic counselor and like a genetic like, science lab? Okay, so, good question. Let me answer that at the end. You mind? Okay. Cool. Okay, so, master's program, genetic counseling and master's. So you go back to school for two additional years, and then you are able to get certified as a, a genetic counselor. The certification is just so that way everybody is trained the same and everybody has the same information, okay? And now, as of right now, 27 states currently need licensure. The good thing is, is that all the license reports are not really different. It's the same test, but it's in a state provided area. It's all run by the, what's called the National Society of Genetic Counselors, which uh, makes the accreditation for the colleges and um, creates the licensure for these statuses. So for instance, what a licensure means is for, I believe Texas does not have a licensure. So any genetic counselor can offer services here, but a state like Minnesota, which requires a licensure, you have to have a license in order to practice there. So it's kind of like a, a license for a doctor too. Okay, reasons you hear from genetic counselors and why they like the profession. <clears throat> Genetics is fascinating, it's ever changing. We're always learning new information. Um, some people will say that I wanted to help people in general. Like for me, that's what I want to do it. I want to be able to help people and help them realize their best life outcome that they can possibly do. Okay, a lot of the opportunities right now are remote, which is amazing. I have, like I said, my company is based out of Minnesota and I work here in Texas and I don't even have to leave my house. I think this is the first time I left my house in like two months. <laughs> Not really, but. <laughs> okay, so what I do, genetic counseling assistant, 
So this is a new role that's kind of been coming out. And the reason why it's coming out is uh, the genetic counselors are finding themselves in a predicament where in order to help more people, they have to release some of the administrative work that's on them. So that's where I come in. So I, typically, like most genetic counselor assistants, will typically have a degree, like I said, in those related fields, biology, genetics, or counseling. From there, on my side, I provide a bunch of paperwork. I help with, on the administration side. I get reports ready. I help with scheduling and telephone calls for the business. So that way, it relieves that information from genetic counselors, and that helps them provide more services to more people. And one of the best things about this is this role is ever rotating. So for me, I plan on staying with my company for about two years so I can learn everything on the ins and outs. From there, hopefully, get into that master's program and then from there be an actual genetic counselor. So like I was saying, uh, Wait, some of the so reasons- So you're not a genetic counselor for at least two years? Uh, so a genetic counselor assistant, you can do anywhere between one to two years if you want. But you don't have to do that. Some people do it just for, for some of these reasons. Like for me, I need to build my master's, my, my graduate school resume to make it look better. Because to be honest, I didn't have the best grades in college, but I still had a very you know, decent GPA. But to make things look better, I want to get this experience because they will take that consideration. Real life experience helps in those, in the, um, in those resumes for, for graduate school, okay? And one of the biggest things, even though there's 5,500 people that are genetic counselors, the actual community is still a very small niche. And what I mean by that, it's very still a small community. They all know each other and they all share information with each other. So if one knows one person in one area, they're probably gonna know another person in another area because of either school, where they worked, um, where they went to school at before, like before the graduate program, it could be a long uh, list of information. And that's it. Okay, so your question, what's the difference between somebody that works in a lab versus a genetic counselor? So a lab person is actually going to maybe get the sample from the person. So they'll get a cheek swab, they'll get the blood sample. From there, they'll actually do the PCR testing. So um, they will get the replication done and do the actual assay that will do that we actually see on our side about the genetic disorders. So the laboratory person is all gonna be in front of a lab. They're gonna be working with the machines. They're gonna be working with the, um, the pipettes. They're gonna be doing all of that stuff there. On the genetic counselor end, we're only seeing patients directly. So our end is all on the front facing. So between, like here, you and me are front so facing. you're kind of like the doctor and the labs are like the surgeon. Ish. Ish. Um, I like the doctor analogy because that's one of the, the things that I thought was great about this career is I would be able to help diagnose alongside doctors without actually having to go to a medical school. So are doctors available for a genetic counselor? Yes. We actually have somebody on my team that is currently working toward hers and it's amazing. So she's doing it on her own pace. So hey, if I'm 60 years old and I finally get a doctorate, I'll get a doctorate. <laughs> So it's not really, um, like that part's huge. Um, so yeah, la, 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 la. what else? Anybody else have any other questions? What led you towards this like, job? Good question. Okay, so originally, like, and that's why I have the little nursing plug in there early, uh, I, was, I wanted to go to school and to be a nurse. So I have finished all my prerequisites for nursing program, but when in the long run, I want to end up in a pediatric setting. So um, one of the things I thought was going to be weird was, okay, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be helping the patient, the, pedi the, the kid, and then their parents are going to be there. The doctor's talking to the parents and they're getting about all the information. And then all of a sudden they decide, we're not going to do that for our kid. We want them to go home. In my head, I'm like, you have to do it, the kid's gonna die, or the kid's gonna, something happens, gonna, like something wrong's gonna happen to them. So I want them to be able to help, and then I'm probably gonna say something I shouldn't, and so all that training for nothing, you know what I mean? So in this setting, uh, I found this out from my genetics professor, and we, I got to sit in a, a conference call with a Chicago-based uh, genetic counselor, and basically spend some time with her talking about a day in the life of a genetic counselor. I saw, said to myself, 
I could do this. The idea behind it is parents will come into my office or hear me out on the phone. I'm going to give them all the information of what they need to do uh, to help their child. From there, they're going to get off the phone and do whatever it is that they're going to do. I'm not really going to hear anything about it. So that, that separation is easy for me. But the best part, if they need more information and education on what happens next or a certain scenario happens, I will be able to be there for them for that. So I can continue to help them and then they leave. So building those emotional bonds aren't so stringent as in a nursing program where I would be very hands-on with the person. You know, um, both still are emotional, there's still ramifications for both, but this one I feel is a little bit more alongside of how I can do it. Yeah. So, yeah. What else you got? Okay. Do you like my shirt? I kind of did it on purpose because, oh, oops. Uh, that's my work stuff. <laughs> so uh, this is a part of the, like our company's colors. So I was like, I'm gonna wear our company's colors. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you guys for having me. You have goodie bags along with Frisbees. There's some snacks in there. There is a pin with a pull-out thing. Um, there's information about our company. Feel free to share that. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. And we'll see y'all next time. Oh, I was like, you put the <laughs>